Merry Christmas, folks, and a Happy New Year. So thank you for tuning in to our 100 subscriber special. Today we'll be taking a look at the best friend of Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina. Funny part about this train, it was actually told to me by some friends, but funny part was I didn't know that it was the replica of the first train in America that they're talking about. I was just imaging a steam engine of sorts, like a consolidation or something. And a big thanks to everyone that helped make this video. Anyways, we have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. I figured we'd start with more of a mechanics of the locomotive, being they're a lot different from more modern locomotives. And then we'll talk about some of the history, starting with the replica and then the original. Although there's not much to talk about with the original, being that it blew up in less than a year. So yeah, anyways, let's get started closest to the window, I will point it out, is a delivery line for the steam, which would go into the cylinders. We'll get to that later. That is coated in insulation, which is the white stuff that you see on the outside, which keeps the steam hotter, being more of a drier steam, which becomes a high-pressure steam, which, being it doesn't really run through much heat, it probably was not very high pressure. So, and then it goes into the cylinders. When it comes back, it comes up this brass colored pipe that goes up to the stack and then exhausts, which leads into some funny history later on that we'll talk about later, so stay tuned. And that is kind of your delivery lines. And then you can see all the gauges, which we'll zoom in here in a second. So now we can see everyone's favorite part of the steam engine, all your favorite gauges Obviously, the big brass thing above all the safety valves, that's obviously your whistle, probably a one chime. And then you can see these two red pieces on each side. Those appear to be your safeties, which also lead in some fun history, a bit older history than the other history, but we will get to that again later. So those are your safeties. You also... I was unable to locate where the injectors are. I think I might see them. I'm not quite sure. I won't, I won't say on video so it could be quoted. But yes, then you can also see your pressure gauge. And then you can also see the other two pipes. You can see your water glasses. And then you can see right where it says best friend in the brass. That's where you keep your wood. Alright, so now we're looking at the front of the locomotive. So then you see this strange looking valve thing. That I think is your throttle. It is the craziest looking throttle I have ever seen personally. But I think that's what that is. The dry pipe leads up to that throttle and then branches off into the two cylinders. The two pipes that come on the outside, that is going to be your return line to exhaust out the stack. Giving you exhaust for your wood burning fire. And then again, we'll get to the Southern Railway thing later in our history segment. But yeah, and then you can see the two cylinders. I think there's Stevenson valve gear set up. Um, it is really strange looking. I'm not sure if it's Stevenson, but I think it's Stevenson, judging by the eccentrics they have on the locomotive. Now, there's one more thing I like to point out on this locomotive. Most of the time, I don't exactly know if this is a blowdown, but I'm assuming this is a blowdown. This little red handle right there, I think is the blowdown valve for the steam locomotive. Meaning that you would have to get out of the engine while it stopped to blow this engine down. While most more modern steam engines, you could do it on the fly. So I just thought I'd mention that. So the friendly, or better known as the best friend, used to haul tourist as promoted by a very famous country singer but the point is what why it haul tourists well the idea was to give you what it might have been like to ride behind a 1830s steam locomotive but now you see that there's a grill on the tender and you're wondering what's that for well the grill is simply there for a diesel engine which is hooked up to a series of chains that are hooked up to the tender wheels, which make the tender the locomotive, and the steam engine a decoration to a diesel engine. So, you might be wondering, why did they do this? Well, you see, you have open-air cars, and you have 
a ash pan. You burn a wood fire, which boils water, sending steam to the cylinders. While well, that steam has to come back from the cylinders and to use the steam to its biggest extent, you use it to draft your fire while you're running. Well, you see that draft is so strong as of any steam engine that blows embers out of the fire and into the open air passenger cars. And ladies in their long hair would end up with their hair lit on fire, and well, you know, that's not very good for business now, is it? The best friend Charleston replica was made in 1928 and was lent to Norfolk Southern in 2005. In 2013, it was brought back down to Charleston, where now it remains in the building, probably 20 to 30 feet away from where it used to ran. So literally, you walk on top of where the rails used to sit, just trying to get into the building, which is quite neat. So... That's enough on the replica's history. Now let's take a look at the the original's history. In 1830, it was built by West Point Foundry and was delivered also in 1830. In December 25th, 1830, it first ran in Charleston, South Carolina. So, who thinks they need to have one of these under their Christmas tree? I do. June 17th. 1831 disaster struck. A very new and unexperienced fireman was firing the best friend. He shut the safety valve because he was annoyed by the loud and noxious sound coming from the escaping steam. Now, safety valves, for those of you that don't know, are very essential. It basically is life and death on a steam engine. But back then they had latches on them, so you could shut them. And the inexperienced fireman shut them. Well, the pressure very quickly built up, blowing up the boiler. The fireman passed away and seriously injured the engineer. However, the engineer did live to tell the tale. So, some parts were actually reused, though, later on to build the Phoenix. And... Leaving pretty much nothing left for this locomotive, which is why we have replica. Otherwise, we probably would have still had the original had it not blown up. It's also partially why the best friend is so famous, because it blew up. Not only was it the first passenger train in the USA, it was also the first train in the USA to blow up. So, that's a little bit on the best friend. So, on these coaches, I want to talk about... The brakes. Most cars before the air brake days had just a brake wheel. These have a brake handle. You pull up on this lever on the floor and applies pressure on the brake pad, which appears to be a very big piece of wood with a brake shoe on it, which applies pressure to the wheel applying your brakes. And then you would have one on each car. So kind of neat feature on these look on these cars. Something I picked up on while looking at these. So now let's take a moment to look at the cars. These cars look like they belong under a Christmas tree with all the red, green, and gold. Their early Lincoln pin design, even older looking than the stuff that you have seen on the narrow gauge railroads. Um, you can see all the the mounting points for chains. They kind of resemble horse carriages, but back then a lot of stuff for railroad was horse carriages put on a wheel with a flange on it. So that's part of the early passenger coaches, but these are just amazing looking coaches. So you will notice on the rails that it has ties. They're male wood, of course, but then the rail is actually also wood. So you have your ties, you have a rail made out of wood, and then you have four wedges that are put on either side to lock in the rail. And then you have a play of steel that goes over the top. That's probably for friction and wear and tear because a steel wheel sitting on just wood would probably wear out pretty quick. Because the wood would, you know, be gone. <laughs> so, of course, the South Carolina Railroad and Canal Company originally had horse-drawn train cars, and then the best friend Charles kind of came into play afterwards. So very neat to see that they had 
accurately represented rails at the Museum of Sorts building. Really neat. So, um, yeah, the best friend Charleston, not only you got to see the beautiful train, but there was tons of tin plates all over that you could learn all the history on the locomotive. So if you want to pause anything to read anything, go ahead. But yeah, it was a lot of fun checking this out. And yeah. And we're back, looking at a mailbox from 1858. Now, I am assuming this is a mailbox, being it says South Carolina Railroad and railways have had a big history with railway post offices. So, I'm assuming this is a mailbox. So, let me know down in the comments down below if you think this is a mailbox or simply a garbage can made in 1858. I think it's a mailbox. So if you want to pause the video and read any of these signs, go ahead. But we're going to talk about the brick sidewalks. And don't ask me, for whatever reason, we have a thing with bricks on the channel. But I wish I grabbed pictures of this. The the I'll try to explain. The sidewalk had bricks turned like rails. And you wouldn't really notice that. Except for um, there was one of, the, one of the guys in there that kind of keeps an eye on the locomotive and all that gives people tours was kind of sitting there and he mentioned that the brick sidewalk had rails decorated into the brick so on our way out we noticed that there was brick turned and gauged like a railroad track and then it was going right by the building and that was roughly estimated where the train would have ran so we're talking 25 to 30 feet <laughs> Is where the train's sitting beside that. So, you know, if you were to have a derailment, it was pretty catastrophic, which I think would be pretty hard to do at 12 miles an hour, even though it did go a little bit faster in some cases. At <laughs> 12 miles an hour, you'd that'd be pretty difficult to get that far off the track. But anyways, it was a great time. I'd like to give a big thanks to all my subscribers for the unofficial 100 subscriber special. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and see you on the rails.